Uh, the name is Leith Davis, not mine, obviously, not my name. Leith Davis is the name of the guy that is apparently going to be Aaron Cresswell's replacement. That would be, I guess, our backup left back. Now, the irony is, of course, that he would be coming from Ipswich Town, which is exactly where Aaron Cresswell came from. So um, a, a well-trodden path for left backs at West Ham. Uh, what do we know about him? Well, he's got 11 assists so far this season, and he's something of a set-piece specialist. Uh, obviously, left Footed, as you would hope. Really good, actually. Uh, excellent at corners. Remind you of anyone? Um, and, of course, he's really, really good at free kicks as well. Uh, gets assists from open play. Uh, scores goals. Can fill in at centre-half as well, which, again, it sounds very, very familiar, doesn't it, to Aaron Cresswellovich. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're being linked with him at the moment. That's one of the numerous news stories that are doing the rounds. How much truth is in it? I don't know. I just bring you the news as I read it just before doing this update probably say from my own point of view that I think right back is probably more of a pressing concern at the moment. That being said, I thought Vladimir Sufal was one of our better performers at the weekend against uh, Crystal Palace, but certainly uh, fullback is a position that's going to need some attention, but depending on which paper, which website uh, you read, which YouTube channel you listen to, we've either got lots of money to spend in January or no money to spend in January. Uh, the truth is ever probably somewhere in the middle. There's been interest in Divine Obama from uh, Derby County. Now, this is going to be no new news at all. They were interested before, and apparently they're, they're back in for him. They've not been discouraged uh, by well, by his outing in Europe. In fact, they've, I think they've been encouraged uh, by the fact that he didn't get on against Crystal Palace. And he's unlikely, let's be fair, to see any action at all against Tottenham. I might be wrong. Uh, but I suspect not. Look, we'll be dealing a little bit later on. We'll be uploading a video of myself and Gio with a little snippet from our uh, our Patreon player ratings where we go into exactly why we think David Moyes is going to knacker the squad out before he's even begun. Not much rotation going on. We'll deal with that later. Later on tonight, we'll upload that video for you. Uh, but yeah, Derby County, uh, very interested in Divine Mubama. I don't know if you heard uh, this news yesterday. It was, was quite shocking, actually, which was... Um, a Kurt Zuma as um, the reason, remember, he missed the game because of personal issues. His house got robbed, basically. And, um, I mean, one of the most bizarre things, fortunately, uh, he's all right. Apparently, his, his wife and his, his kids were really scared, as, as you can imagine. A hundred, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how true this is. It has to be said. I, I've not, you know, I've known, why would anyone verify the news of me? A hundred thousand pounds worth of cash. That's what I heard. I might be completely wrong. As I say, check, check your favourite newspaper, website, whatever. £100,000 in cash. Who keeps that kind of cash lying around? I, I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, he's, he's basically shaken but not stirred, as, as we can understand it. And it looks like he'll be back for the Tottenham and the Fulham game as well. But, yeah, um, you know, hell of a shock. Happens quite a lot as well, I think. I mean, certainly with a lot of these, lot of these footballers. I think they get paid so much money, don't they, these footballers, all on a, over a hundred grand a week. You'd think you'd probably employ some personal security. It happens to a lot of the um, lot of the Manchester-based players, actually. So there you go. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a shame there for uh, Kurt Zuma and his family. Um, what I wanted to uh, speak to you about, uh, as much as anything else, actually, was, I don't know if you heard the, or saw, saw the tweet from Fabrizio Romano, which was about, uh, to do with Mohamed Caduce. And it, I just found the language really, really interesting, actually. Fabrizio Romano said that Mohamed Kadus is very happy with how things are going, but also the club are very happy with how Mohamed Kadus is progressing because he is pivotal to the long-term project at West Ham. I thought, well, that's interesting language. Really interesting language. Because there's one thing we do know, and that is that Fabrizio Romano was front and centre ahead of all those deals that Tim Steiton closed. As I understand it, Tim Steiton was the was actually getting you no, know, you know those they weren't well they're not selfies, it's only a selfie if you take it yourself. But those photos of Steiton on the jet and he'd be there with, with his arms round um you know the player and the player's agent and uh, and the photo would go up on Twitter and Fabrizio Romano would say, you know, here we go, uh, Tim Steiton flying over with Edson Alvarez from West Ham to sign the deal. Apparently, it was Tim Steiton who was, was handing those pictures to Fabrizio Romano. So we, we know there's a line of communication there uh, between the two. And I think 
reading between the lines, I just thought it was really, really interesting a turn of phrase that really, uh, the, the future long-term project. So I, I, I've often wondered, you know, I, I think I thought a few of the players, considering how crap we've been, um, and well, I'm, look, not results wise, but I don't think the way we play is particularly conducive to, to players who might like attacking football. And I thought they're pretty chilled about it, really, a lot of these players. Uh, maybe just maybe they know about this long term project a little bit more than we do. But it appears that Fabrizio Romano is so, um, yeah, I mean, just probably adds more fuel to the fire, really, that, that West Ham are uh, sort of marking out time with David Moyes um, until he goes. Anyway, before I get on to, um, I go. I need to talk about the Bristol Cities uh, in a second, and I need to talk about the stadium uh, capacity. Uh, in, in fact, stay tuned for that. You want to know what today's offer is, don't you? I'll tell you what today's offer is. Today's offer is five pound for a pair of socks. That sounds like a lot for socks, doesn't it? No, five pound per pair. Not just any socks. Hammers Chat socks. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful socks. Look at, I say look at, I say look at them. I can do even better than that. I wouldn't ask you to wear something that I wouldn't wear myself. Look at them. Look at these. Beauties. Absolute beauties. They're actually my favourite product in the store. That's uh, hammerschatstore.com. The link's in the description below. We are doing a deal every day this week. We're at the eight days of Hammers Chat Christmas. I think we're calling it something like that. Yesterday was the mugs, 20% off all mugs. It's gone now. You can't have that anymore. Today, it's the socks. Go and nab yourself some socks. They're not massive. They're different sizes. You know, You'd be a bit stingy if you used these as stockings for your kids, do you know what I mean? For hang up for Christmas, for Father Christmas to put his presents in there. No, you've got to wear them on your feet. And they don't stop your feet from smelling, I'll tell you that now. Um, anyway, from feet to Bristol's. I mean, this is, this, is, this is amazing what's happened here. Because earlier on in the season, our under-21s in the EFL Trophy, um, they played Bristol Rovers and, uh, and beat them 4-1. And as you probably know, West Ham have drawn a Bristol City... Uh, in the FA Cup third round at home. So, uh, you, I mean, amazing, really. It's um, You wait around forever, and this season, West Ham managed to get their hands on both Bristols. So, it's uh, I'm looking forward to that one. I always wanted uh, an easier draw, uh, certainly. Um, last but not least, I should probably talk about the stadium increase, actually. And that is uh, that we're looking to increase the size of the stadium. Not us, the LLDC, but it's in conjunction with us. We must have requested it. So we put in an application for the uh, upgraded safety certificate, which you need when you're basically going to put loads of, loads of people in a venue. 68,000. Um, maybe maybe 60, 68,500. Don't know. Would make us the second largest stadium capacity-wise in the... Um, in the country, I think it probably already is the largest stadium, but I mean, in, in terms of bums on seats, 68,000. And do remember that held 90,000 for the Olympics, that stadium. Now, is is the weird thing. As I've, as I've probably bored you by saying over the years, if you watch this channel a long time, I went to the Olympics. There was one of the days we went on there, there was 90,000 people in the stadium. At the same time, the, uh, the velodrome, the cycling was on. That had 15, 20,000 people in it. And there was something going on. There was another building uh, there as well with, with some other events going on. We, we had a look and we thought there were probably 20, 120,000 people in the Olympic Park that day. And it all kicks out at roughly the same time. We all walked down to Stratford um, and, and sort of got on trains. I'm not saying we walked straight on and nobody was there. But it was, it was a lot smoother. It was a lot easier. Anybody that goes to West Ham now, you know, and you try and leave straight away, those stop and go signs, well, they've closed Westfield off. They don't let you go through Westfield. And they just stop you. So actually to walk from the stadium to the station straight away after the game it takes about 45 minutes. So you, you, you know what? It's, it's all well and good having the best transport links in the world, isn't it, for these... Um, you know, they don't they have, you know what, the train station is, is really good. You can get overground, undergrounds, um, all the wombles. You, you can do anything you, you want from there. But to actually get from the stadium to the station, it's a pain in the arse. You've got all these people in, um, in high-vis jackets just stopping you with, with lollipop sticks. Stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. Um, look, my point is, I, I don't think they can handle the number of people that they've got at the moment. And uh, so, yeah. And, and also, I mean, the stadium's about to get a new sponsorship, as I understand it, from Allianz. And they're going to spend that money on, on you know, putting a few or whatever, making a few more of the seats available. I don't know. Apparently, they're going to have to upgrade the um, uh, the catering as well. Uh, they have to sort the toilets out because you know, if you try to have a um, 
Try to have a Jimmy Riddle half time. It's it's always pretty packed in there, isn't it? As well. So I I don't know. I, I just found it. I found it a strange one. And it's very very rare you either you ever watch a game, um, either on TV or you go to the stadium yourself and you see every seat is is occupied. Uh, maybe maybe a big European nights. You know, um, possibly you know if we play Tottenham or, or something like that. Tottenham or Arsenal maybe or something. But by and large, I don't, I don't know. I I think personally. I think the capacity is probably good enough at the moment. But hey, what do I know? Anyway, that's your news uh, for today. Don't forget, tune in later on. Myself and Gio, it'll be a little snippet from our player ratings where we're uh, both highly concerned, it has to be said, about David Moyes' use of the squad. It's not even use of the squad, use of the same bloody players all the time. We think they might be knackered. Tune in later on. Don't forget your socks. <laughs>